Robert A. It's Tyler here with Behind the Bot, checking with team number 18367 Graffiti, coming out of Greendale, Wisconsin. I'm here with Ian, Megan, Tyler, and Charlie. We'll be taking more of a closer look at this bot, uh, talking about not only the cool aesthetics, of course, you see on here, uh, intake going through the conveyor, uh, the shooter, wobble goal mechanism, maybe some odometry as well, too, and a cool webcam, uh, all here on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. Hey, FTC teams, championships may be canceled, but FTC Reveal Night is still on where you can create a two-minute hype video to show off your team to the first community. Last year, dozens of teams submitted their robot hype video and thousands watched live as they were showcased. The event will take place on Saturday, April 24th, and submissions are due by Sunday, April 18th. Find out more information at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash FTC Reveal 2021 or at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. So Ian, we're gonna be looking at the intake starting out here. We'll put a couple of rings through. Uh, uh, interesting bottom of your intake as well too, I wanna to hear about as well. Uh, yeah, so our intake is made up of uh, a compliant wheel intake and we also have some plastic tubing on it uh, just to give it some extra reach and assist the rings into the robot. And then we also have on the very bottom of it, uh, we actually have a dust pan, an upside down <laughs> dust pan that uh, runs along the field and helps get uh, the rings into our robot. So I will demonstrate that for you guys. Uh, and yeah, that's our intake. So tell me about this dustpan idea. I mean, teams always go through different iterations of their robot, right? How did we come up with the dustpan for our robot? Um, yeah, so we, uh, originally we started out in uh, uh, one of our team members' basements before we went to uh, our school. Um, so we were trying to find a way to kind of get the rings into the robot from the ground without the robot kind of getting stuck on the ground because it kind of, when we, we were trying to get... Um, when we were trying to pick up rings, uh, the bottom of a robot kept running into the ground and kind of scraping against it. Sure. Uh, so we tried a spatula, actually, and we tried this dustpan, and this dustpan worked really well, and then we decided to use it. Uh, and then also for the intake as well, too, we, we don't see too many teams that do both tubing and compliant wheels on it. Tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so the tubing is kind of just, uh, it gives it a little extra reach and a little extra uh, push into the robot. Um, our comp the compliant wheels are the main things, but we found out that the tu just from some tests that we ran that tubing does, does give it a little bit of extra help. Makes a lot of sense. We're going to be going over to Megan here who's going to be talking about uh, your conveyor system as well as the shooter that's on your robot, Megan. Yeah, so once the rings go into the robot, they're pushed up with our timing belt system and they go all the way up to our shooter. And then when we're ready to shoot, we just remove the servo blocker and our flywheel here will start powering up and shooting the rings. And this year we ended up going with one powered flywheel while our other flywheel is free spinning. And this allows us to have the accuracy of alignment while only having one motor and not having to worry about two motors fighting each other while spinning wheels. And we also added some weight here, which gives the robot uh, flywheel some extra momentum and it doesn't slow down with resistance when rings are shot. So Megan, I want to follow up a little bit on something you said here um, in regards to the gate that you have. Uh, does your shooter not power up until this gate's open or how does that work exactly? So we usually do keep our shooter running and at the last competition, one problem we r ran into was if we'd move our conveyor a little bit too far, the rings would shoot out at the wrong time. So we recently sure. added this, which stops that problem. Makes a lot of sense. Love hearing the iteration uh, process on that. Uh, so I think we're going over to the wobble goal. We're going to go back to Ian uh, for that. Talk about the wobble goal on this robot before we talk about uh, some of the underbelly of the robot as well. Oh uh, yeah. So our wobble goal uh, is just basically a claw, and we have a bunch of padding on it so that it grips around the wobble a lot better and makes makes it so that it doesn't move as much. We also have this little uh, base channel right here so that when the wobble is actually inside of the robot, it doesn't move around. Um, and then for getting it over the wall or picking it up, it just uh, swings like 180 degrees over. And then we can uh, release the hand and drop it down. Makes a lot of sense to me. It looks very efficient. I don't think there's much more to really talk about on that. It works well and that's what it's all about, right? Uh, so we'll keep moving on. Tyler, I know you're gonna be uh, talking about on the webcam here, the robot, and not just webcam, a lot of robots have webcams, right? But you've been trying to do something a little bit unique and something on your own with it as well. Yeah, so at the beginning of the year, there wasn't much we couldn't get our hands on the specific webcam, which is recommended by First for yeah, use. That's really like a big shortage, right? Yeah. So. 
so we had a webcam lying around, but it didn't work well with first thing. So we decided to make our own. Uh, we gathered a whole lot of training images from different lighting levels and different background objects to uh, train the train a neural network to learn what the amount of rings in a stack uh, at the beginning of autonomous of the autonomous period. So where are you at so far in that progress of having that fully implemented? Uh, so it, we have the network finished. Uh, right now we're doing research on how to imp use TensorFlow Lite uh, to implement it sure. into uh, the robot itself. It does have some advantages over FIRST's built-in system as uh, if conditions like this where it isn't too bright, uh, first web FIRST's image recognition system doesn't do well, but we trained ours with lots of different lighting levels to make sure that that doesn't happen. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Charlie, you're going to be talking about the uh, odometry on your robot that you're using. Uh, so let's hear a little bit more about that process. We have uh, three odometers on the bottom of the robot here. And we use what's called dead wheel odometry, where as the robot moves around, it just stay, the wheels just don't move at all. And they just roll along and figure out where the robot is on the field throughout the match. And with the reason we have three of these wheels here is so that during the match, we can strafe left and right so we can get to different positions easier and do what we want to do better. Makes a lot of sense on that. Um, from what you've used it so far in the season, I know you've had a competition under your belt already. Uh, now you're here. Uh, any improvements from overtime from your last competition to this one? Um, well, we've had many problems throughout the entire season working with odometry, from uh, the parts being too weak to handle the odometers and wires being like, broken apart. And we're still working on getting odometry as good as we want it to be in the end, but we're making good progress. Makes a lot of sense. So 18367 Graffiti, uh, really appreciate your time. Tell us about your robot. Uh, obviously a beautiful machine you have uh, here as well too, but functioning really well. Just watch one of their matches. They look great. Can't wait to see how they do here at the competition and good luck throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.